Imagine this, it's a frigid winter night on the open prairie, the wind howling like a pack of wolves, snow piling up outside, and the temperature dropping to a bone-chilling zero degrees Fahrenheit. You're wrapped in every blanket you own, sitting by a roaring fireplace and still shivering. Now, picture a Native American family, 600 years ago, sleeping soundly in a teepee tent made of buffalo hides and wooden poles right in the heart of that storm. No brick walls, no electric heaters, no insulated floors, just hides, fire, and a deep understanding of survival. How did they do it? How did they turn a flimsy-looking tent into a warm refuge night after night, year after year, without freezing to death? This isn't just a story of endurance. It's a masterclass in ancient ingenuity that kept entire families alive through the harshest winters. So grab a warm drink, settle in, and let's uncover the seven survival secrets that made them winter warriors. Let's set the scene. The prairie winters weren't occasional blizzards. They were a relentless annual challenge. Snowstorms rolled in with clockwork precision, bringing winds that could cut through the toughest hides and temperatures that turned exposed skin to ice. For us today, getting locked out of our homes for a single night in such conditions would leave us as popsicles by dawn. Yet, these Native American families didn't just survive, they thrived, sleeping through the cold as if it were just another Tuesday. Their teepees, to modernize, might look as sturdy as a paper grocery bag, but inside, they created a system so effective it's hard to believe. The secret? It started with where they chose to plant their tents, a decision that could mean life or death. Choosing the right campsite was the first line of defense. Imagine a family trudging across the snowy prairie, dragging poles and hides as daylight fades and storm clouds loom. They weren't guessing where to stop. They were reading the land like experts. Open plains were a death trap, with wind sharp enough to slice through any shelter. Instead, they sought natural wind breaks. Thick tree lines or dense shrubs that acted as massive shields, raising the teepee's interior temperature by a few precious degrees. In a blizzard, that small boost could prevent frostbite and ensure a good night's sleep. Cliffs and rock faces were gold mines too, soaking up sunlight all day and releasing it slowly at night like natural radiators. Smart families pitched their teepees close enough to catch this warmth, but far enough to avoid snow slides that could bury them. Valleys offered another option, shielding them from the fiercest gusts, but they knew the catch. Low spots could trap cold air like a bowl, turning a safe haven into a freezer. And then there was firewood. In a treeless expanse, fuel wasn't a luxury, it was survival currency. They always camped near deadfall, fallen branches or dry wood, ensuring they had enough to keep the fire alive even when storms raged. This wasn't just camping, it was high-stakes real estate. The wrong spot didn't mean noisy neighbors or bad schools. It meant the entire family, from elders to children, could freeze where they slept. Their expertise in location turned the prairie into a chessboard, and they were always three moves ahead. Now, let's step inside the teepee. Picture a structure made of buffalo hides stretched over wooden poles, standing defiantly against the frozen prairie. At its center burns a tiny fire pit, maybe six inches deep, tended by an elder with a steady hand. Sounds risky, right? A fire inside a fabric tent feels like playing hot potato with your own home. But this wasn't reckless. It was genius. The fire was never a roaring blaze. It was small and carefully managed managed, designed to warm without overwhelming. That shallow pit was key, preventing heat from pooling at ground level and encouraging airflow to circulate. Above the fire, at the teepee's peak, were smoke flaps, adjustable vents that guided smoke upward like a chimney. Depending on the wind's direction, families tilted these flaps open or closed, a primitive HVAC system crafted with hides and physics. Small side vents near the ground let in 
fresh oxygen, feeding the flames as cold air slipped in low and rose out through the flaps. This wasn't a set it and forget it setup. Someone had to be the fire tender, the human thermostat. Adults took shifts all night, feeding dry wood, watching for sparks, and ensuring no smoke built up. Too much flame turned the teepee into an oven, too little left the kids shivering. Imagine maintaining that balance in a house made of paper towels. Yet they did it, night after night, engineering a portable heating system centuries before radiators were a dream. But the cold didn't just come from the air, it crept up from the ground. Sleeping directly on frozen earth was like lying on a block of ice, draining body heat within hours. No fire or blanket could save you then. Native families turned the floor into a survival masterpiece. The base layer was tight willow mats, woven thick and stacked like nature's carpet. These mats trapped air pockets, nature's best insulator, creating a barrier against the icy ground. On top, they piled dry grasses, packed thick to block frost, but still breathable, a natural cushion that kept the cold at day. This wasn't just comfort, it was instinctual engineering, with hypothermia as the penalty for getting it wrong. Then came the hides, buffalo, elk, or deer, fur side up to trap heat, leather side down to block drafts. Families didn't just toss down blankets, they built a layered thermal fortress. Some even crafted compacted soil beds, scraping off the topsoil and packing the subsoil rock hard to hold and release daytime warmth, like a primitive memory foam mattress. When the cold grew brutal, they added hot stones, smooth river rocks heated by the fire, wrapped in hides, and slid lid under the bedding. Suddenly, they weren't just insulated, they were lying on a slow-release heater. Picture children curled in nest-like depressions, adults forming a protective wall, everyone wrapped like a family-sized burrito on a floor designed to fight the cold. This wasn't luxury, it was a lifeline, working night after night long before heated mattress pads existed. The real heater, though, was the human body and native families knew how to maximize it. Unlike us, sprawled out on separate beds, they bunched together, curling up tight like a human puzzle. Imagine grandma in the center, kids tucked against her, parents forming a wall around them. It wasn't just cozy, it was strategy. The more bodies packed together, the more heat stayed trapped. A principle shared with penguins in Antarctica, but executed with hides. Their clothing was a science too. Base layers of soft, processed hide wicked moisture away from the skin. Middle layers of thick fur acted as the thermal barrier. Outermost hides shielded against drafts, creating an onion-like system long before mountaineers popularized it. But it wasn't just about layering. Tucking was critical. Hands went into armpits, feet pulled up close, kids wrapped like burritos in buffalo hides. Extremities froze first, so they got special care. Fur wrappings, hide mitts, even grass insulation stuffed into moccasins. The golden rule, don't sweat. Too much activity meant damp clothes, and in sub-zero nights, that was a death sentence faster than frostbite. They warmed up before bed, but stopped short of breaking a sweat, managing their heat with precision. While we grumble about weak Wi-Fi, they mastered body heat with a connection so strong, it kept families alive until sunrise. When even the thickest hides couldn't cut it, they turned to an unconventional trick, rubbing animal fat and ashes on their skin. It might sound like a barbecue gone wrong, but in a fight for survival, it was a game changer. Buffalo tallow, thick and long lasting, acted like a waterproof coat, trapping a warm air layer against the body while blocking icy winds. Bear fat offered strong protection for adults, while deer fat, gentler on skin, was perfect for children. A functional skincare routine, not a $200 store bought cream. Then came the ash, mixed with fat into a paste. Campfire ashes fine carbon particles absorbed and held heat from the fire, creating a survival face paint. Black smudges adorned cheeks, foreheads, wrists, ankles, and necks. Pulse points where blood vessels ran close to the surface, keeping circulation warm. Leather wraps, soaked in fat, became prehistoric heated bracelets. Picture an elder smearing this mixture on a child's face as snow hammered the teepee outside. Not a beauty ritual, but raw survival. That fat and ash barrier could mean the difference between a healthy morning and a frozen fate. Next time you complain about dry winter skin, remember this skincare doubled as armor 
saving lives with every application. Vulnerability shaped their sleeping arrangements. Kids and elders, unable to generate or retain heat like healthy adults, were the most at risk. A single cold night could tip the scales, and everyone knew it. So they designed their layout like a living blueprint. The fire burned at the center, and the most vulnerable claimed the prime spots where heat distribution was most even. Children and grandparents nestled there, wrapped in doubled or tripled layers, five or six hides turning them into furry cocoon creatures. Elders got extra coverage too, as a stray draft could shut their systems down. Heated stones, wrapped in hide, were tucked near children's feet or against an elder's back, offering localized warmth that lasted. Adults sacrificed sleep, checking on them through the night, a vigilance born of necessity in a world without hospitals or safety nets. This wasn't just cuddling, it was geometry with life or death stakes. Love became thermal, every hug, lair, and watchful glance a lifeline. But survival wasn't just about the cold, predators lurked too. A blizzard might not kill, but a pack of hungry wolves could. Native families turned their camps into mini fortresses. Dogs, not lap pets, but trained guardians were the first line of defense. Early warning systems with fur and fangs, they distinguished between a lone bear, a wolf pack, or a mountain lion, barking with purpose. Inside, weapons, spears, bows, knives were always within reach, ready to grab in the dark. A parent could roll over and have a spear in hand before the flat moved. A 24-7 home defense system, centuries before motion detectors. They also landscaped for safety, piling snow mounds to funnel animals into predictable paths and digging shallow trenches to channel wind and confuse predators. Picture an elder stirring at a dog's growl, a father reaching for a bow, children huddling tighter by the fire, wolves pacing outside with glowing eyes. The, te the teepee wasn't just a shelter, it was a stronghold, every family member part of the defense. The true secret, though, was mindset. Native families didn't see winter as an enemy to fight, but a season to dance with. If a campsite grew too windy, they moved. If storms intensified, they sealed their shelters tighter, shifted routines, and adapted. No weather apps, no rescue helicopters, just sharp eyes, generations of memory, and respect for the land. They were their own forecast, reading clouds, wind, and animal behavior with trust in that knowledge. Survival wasn't about comfort, it was about harmony with nature, a rhythm that kept them alive storm after storm. Morning broke, the storm passed, and the family stirred, alive, warm, proof their system worked. No central heating, no modern tech, just wisdom passed down, weighing nothing, yet saving everything. So here's your challenge. Could you survive one night in a teepee with just fire, hides, and hot stones? Or would you tap out before midnight? Drop your answer in the comments. I'd love to see who thinks they could hack it. If you enjoyed this dive into ancient survival wisdom, hit subscribe because the next storm, whether 600 years ago or tomorrow, is always closer than you think. Until next time, stay warm and keep exploring.